Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeff Lindsay. I'm the St. Genevieve R2 superintendent. And it is truly an honor and a privilege to welcome all of you to the 2017 St. Genevieve High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony. The Hall of Fame was established in 2012 to recognize and commend graduates of St. Genevieve High School who have led distinguished lives. Selection is based upon leadership, character, achievement, service, and suitability as a role model for all current and future students of the St. Genevieve R2 School District. Nominations are made by the general public and voted on by the St. Genevieve High School Hall of Fame Committee, consisting of nine current and former teachers, administrators, Board of Education members, community members, and a student representative. Would members of the committee that are in attendance tonight please stand and be recognized with our applause. St. Genevieve High School Hall of Fame is funded entirely through donations from the community. We would like to take this opportunity to publicly thank the area businesses and individuals who have graciously made contributions to sponsor the Hall of Fame. This year is the sixth class of inductees into the SGHS Hall of Fame, bringing our total number to 17. The SGHS Hall of Fame portraits are on display in the lobby at the entrance to the Peggy J. Johnson Gymnasium. We would like to congratulate this year's inductees, Dave Stiegel and Steve Beezer. We also extend a special welcome and recognition to their families and friends that are here in attendance tonight. We will begin the ceremony with Dave Stiegel, class of 1956. Dave Stiegel was an outstanding high school athlete and student leader at St. Genevieve High School. He was a varsity letterman in football, basketball, and baseball, was a team captain in all three sports, and served as a mentor to grade school boys after school. He was also active in the school play and weightlifting. Mr. Stiegel's passion for sports carried over into his adult life. He became a mainstay at, in St. Genevieve's youth sports programs for his entire life. He spent 34 years involved in amateur baseball uh, in St. Genevieve in many various roles. He was a charter member of the St. Genevieve Yanks Baseball Club in 1963 and was instrumental in the building of Yanks Field. He played amateur baseball for 19 years after high school, first with the Zell Baseball Club for five years and for 14 years with the St. Genevieve Yanks. From 1976 through 1983, Dave Stiegel managed the St. Genevieve American Legion Post 150 baseball team while also managing youth teams in the St. Genevieve Babe Ruth League. He served as business manager, manager for the St. Genevieve Yanks organization for several years performing tasks such as purchasing equipment, organizing teams, and making schedules for all of the amateur teams in St. Genevieve. In addition, Mr. Stiegel volunteered countless hours every summer, helping to maintain Yanks Field, preparing the field for games, working in the concession stand, or filling in when an umpire was needed. For the better part of three decades, it would indeed be a rare occasion to not see Mr. Stiegel or Pops as he would eventually be known by his players at a baseball game at Yanks Field, volunteering his time in whatever capacity was needed, even after working all day at his daytime job. Through the volunteer efforts of many people from Mr. Stiegel's generation, including himself, St. Genevieve Yanks Field was built and maintained as one of the finest baseball fields in Missouri, helping establish Saint, a St. Genevieve tradition of outstanding amateur baseball. Dave Stiegel was also a registered official for high school baseball and football and American Legion baseball. In his final season of officiating high school football in 1993, he was honored with a special request to officiate in the high school football playoffs shortly after being diagnosed with cancer. Mr. Stiegel turned down the offer knowing that he could not give 100% to the job. Mr. Stiegel served in the U.S. Army Reserves and was a member of the St. Genevieve Elks. In 1975, he was awarded the William B. Doc Doyle Award for community service with youth sports. In 1986, he was inducted into the Southeast Missouri Amateur Baseball Hall of Fame. Mr. Stiegel worked for many years for Klein Plumbing and Heating until being hired as the first director of maintenance for the St. Genevieve R2 School District. The Stiegel family owned the local Dairy Queen for several years 
providing jobs for area teenagers. Mr. Stiegel's community service extended beyond youth sports. He was a volunteer firefighter, volunteer maintenance man for St. Genevieve Catholic Church and the Nuns Convent, volunteer handyman for numerous neighbors and friends, and was active in fighting floods in St. Genevieve. Mr. Siegel was always willing to lend a helping hand anytime someone or the community needed help. Dave Stiegel passed away in 1994, but his passion for sports and his lifetime of community service in youth sports has influenced a generation of St. Genevieve youth. The Dave Stiegel Scholarship was awarded by the St. Genevieve Yanks organization for many years. His legacy has lived on through his many children and grandchildren who have gone on to become outstanding athletes at SGHS. Dave and his wife Kay raised seven children, Shelly, DJ, Lori, Paul, Mike, Pat, and Kara. Kay Stiegel was a longtime secretary in the St. Genevieve R2 School District. Besides their children, survivors include 18 grandchildren, seven step-grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren, and three great-step-grandchildren. I believe at this time we have a video that's uh, been prepared by the family. I'm, my name is Butch Lucas. I was a catcher for the Yanks through the 66 through 77 seasons with Dave. He was the, the best one-eyed first baseman and best hit, one-eyed hitter I've ever seen. Yeah. And you know, as kids, we didn't know that he couldn't see out of one eye. No, and it, you wouldn't have known it if he hadn't told you. Yeah. But we had a great time, and of course, for... 10 or 11 seasons that right. we traveled and the, in those days the Yanks played four or five games a week. It was That, that was about all you had time to do in the evenings. And we got to know the Steagles very well. It was mm -hmm. a, a big part of our growing up because David was a little bit older than the rest of us. He was always the, the mentor and the Whatever David said was the way it was going to be. That's how the Yanks were run back in those days. Uh -huh. It was a good organization. Yeah. I never, I never saw Dad as a, like the leader. Oh, he was. There was, there was no doubt about it. And part of it was because of his experience and his age, and part of it was because of his talent. He was, he knew how to play the game, and he played it well, and, mm -hmm. and it rubbed off on all the younger guys. And you had said that you felt like he was the heart and soul. Yes, and I, I think Vernie and Neil and Bob would, would tell you the same thing, that when you thought of the St. Genevieve Yanks, it was David Stiegel that came to mind first. Yeah. Uh, there were some, some pretty good talent on some of those teams, but David was always always the left-handed hitter that you could count on. Yeah. Can you remember any specific when he was actually playing? No, I, I remember him getting spiked at first base actually one time on a, as a runner came down the line and he was, he was playing first and that's just about all that I remember. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can remember, um, you know, mom used to bring like a big buckets of chicken, you know, and sitting on the hill and watching. <laughs> You know, so it was well, the, quite the family affair. You know, the kids will tell you that the highlight of the game is this when Stobby threw the yeah, the bubble the gum bubble out gum, on the free bubble gum. Yeah, yeah, out on the cotton the floor, and yeah. everybody ran for the bubble gum. Yeah. But and then, but you mentioned that um, Dad would stop by and visit afterwards because I think that's a big part of him. Was oh just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. When when he was working chasing parts and things for the school district he'd mm -hmm. come by and they'd be working on a project and he'd have to go to the city to pick something up well he'd often stop by and we'd yeah. spend an hour or so visiting i'm sure they they didn't know that at the school <laughs> district but no and knowing david he might have been on his own time who right. knows All right yeah they just don't come any better than david Stiegel. yeah go uh, ahead so in in 1953, when I started high school, it was probably the first time, well, it was the first time that I met Dave in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, down through the years, school years I'm talking about, he was as competitive individual as you'll ever 
C or me. But he was he was competitive in a in a good sort of way. He wasn't one that if it didn't go his way, there wasn't no bad thing about it. He he took it in stride and we went on. But we didn't we didn't dwell on it or anything like that. And I, the other thing that about about Dave is if he considered you his friend or and or you considered him a friend, you had a friend for as long as you needed a friend. Most individuals that come up against Dave, they didn't want to be on anybody else's team but his, <laughs> especially when it comes to playing basketball, because he had the most educated elbows of any <laughs> that, that, that I ever played basketball with or against. Yeah. Uh, the old winner, like I said, started high school in 53 when I first come in contact with Dave Stevens. Okay. Mr. Uh, Vern Bauman. Um, met Dave, I guess, first. I probably knew him a little bit before, but when I got in high school in 54, and I uh, played baseball with him many years with Zell and then with the Yanks when he managed baseball. Mm -hmm. And like Neil says, he was always a competitor. He was a good athlete. He loved all sports, basketball, baseball, and everything. And he's, he liked kids too. He, he always brought the kids to, always to the all the games and everything. And, mm -hmm. and uh, he just was just loved the sport and loved doing things like that. And he, mm -hmm. he was really a, uh, I admire him. He, he could hit the ball. He could do whatever. Everybody when we played with Zell, everybody was a pitcher. Same as Neil was a pitcher. And everybody and we took turn to doing everything, but. Nothing but good memories. He worked in the getting of help Kenny and the different ones, and then later on, he, all the Yanks. He was always there, helped in any way he could for many, many years. He just devoted his life to to things he loved, like sports especially, and so, just, especially with with uh, the younger kids. Yeah, young, yeah. And, and he had a, a a unique way. I guess that's I don't know if that's a proper word, but someone was batting or, or throwing the ball, he he could pinpoint if he had a problem with, with with his hitting or his pitching or just throwing the ball or feeling the ball. He could hit it right on the nose. He, he could tell a kid or whoever, he, he, even even someone as old as him, he could he could straighten them out as, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. He had a unique way of doing it. He, he, he seen just, the little things all the yes, time. Yes, he, he sure did. Little things that made a difference. Yeah. You said uh, I knew Dave as an opponent and as a, a player on my team mm -hmm. or on his team. He managed the Yanks for a few years, as did I. But uh, Dave was more baseball savvy than I was. He, uh, as Neil said a while ago, he had the most educated elbows in high school that I ever knew because I received some of them. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> He too was uh, dedicated to the team that he was on, and he was a, a team player. I mean, he he uh, participated in anything, and and he was one of the mainstays in the Yanks organization. And probably without him and several other guys, but uh, Dave was a mainstay in the building of the Yanks baseball field, which the school has now. And I'm certainly glad that the high school stepped in because the, some of the older guys were getting too old to spend the time it takes to keep a field like that up. And Dave, as far as I can remember, was up there every night and he even showered in yeah. our shower room <laughs> Any time I, shower. because he worked with Klein Plumbing mm -hmm. during the day and, and he would go up there after work and whatever it was, uh, running water to the scoreboard or uh, fixing the baselines for the Babe Ruth game coming up or whatever day was there to do that. And So did, other than playing, did, who coached with Dan? I know you had mentioned coaching too. Well, or Donnie Staub coached one year with Dave. I don't remember how many days actually managed the Yanks, but it was two or three or four years, I know. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we won the Bi-State League one year, uh, and I, I think, I'm not sure who was the manager that year. We 
we've got the Delbert Childers Traveling Trophy, which the Yanks won from Zell. How about that? I was just going to say, Bernie, we must have put play in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anything that Dave undertook, he saw through to the finish. You guys probably know better than anybody, Dave was Dave. I mean, it, it, there could be four guys in the room and Dave had his idea and you couldn't change it. I mean, he he, he was Dave. He, so, he was headstrong, but he was headstrong in a good sort of way. Right, right. My understanding, that's how he, how he ran um, the school. So what about, how about helping each other personally, maybe? Uh, well, he was your competitor. Yeah, I was in plumbing heating <laughs> business also. So oh, was, okay. <laughs> we got along good anytime oh, yeah. we needed anything from one another. Right, we, right. We got along. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put yeah. it this way. If you needed something, all you had to do was say, Dave, can you do this or can you do that? Right. And it was, it was either, he either did it or he got it done for you. Right. Now, I'm not saying he built a house for you or anything. Like right. that. But if you needed something unique, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he found some way or some source to, to make yeah. that unique thing for you yeah. to become part of whatever you needed, mm -hmm. needed it for. And I'll, I'll, I'll want to interject something that Bob said a little while ago about a team person. He was the ultimate team player. He didn't care if he didn't score in basketball. He didn't care if he scored one point or if he scored 30 points. He was going to give you the ball so you could score. That that was your dad. That was Dave Stevens. Yeah. I dug a bunch of ditches for him. And when he was in the plumbing with clients, oh, yeah? him and Dick, he was always good to work with. Always had everything laid out and a good manager. And he, he was that way on on the ball field and he, everything he did, he would just, uh, just go to work and work. He worked at everything, worked at baseball, played a lot of baseball and football. Yeah. He was tough to tackle on the football field yeah. too. And when he hit you, you knew he was hit. But uh, he was just a good good friend to everybody. He was just a, and uh, I see we had the bases loaded and Hot crowner hit the third, and somebody, I, mean, I don't know if Bob was on who was there, but they was expecting the throw to go home, and he'd stand there at first just looking at home, and the ball went right by him. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was you, yeah. I told Mark that the other day when he said that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that play. He was there looking at home. He got, he seen him scoop, and he went like this, and the throw come right, the throw was right by him. <laughs> he expected the players going to be at home. Yeah. <laughs> Just had a lot of years of baseball. Neil played with Zell all those mm -hmm. years. Bob played with the Yanks, and then I played later with Bob and yes. Dave. Whenever the Yanks. I only played one year with the Yanks. I think I played six or seven. You played that long? Yeah. Well, Mr. Steiger, how long? How many years did you play? I was a a rookie when it started, and the old man when it quit. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> We all get that way, don't we? Yeah. We play till we. It's amazing. Back in those days. We would go to uh, Grandpa Sexar, I ran the ice house over there, and we, he had an old yellow truck, and the damn thing would never start. So we have to push it to get it going, but we dragged the infield. Uh, you guys probably don't remember no. the, the old road in the park, but... <laughs> we, Man, you're going back there, bud. <laughs> yeah, we, we dragged the field to play. We'd sell the soda and the Cracker Jacks and stuff, between innings, <laughs> and after it was over with, we'd have to police up the area. We chalked the you field. You did everything, yeah. And and, and now, now you can't get them to, to hardly come and play. Right. right. We finally uh, shut down the Yanks baseball adult team because we couldn't get anybody interested in it. Yep. And man, back when Dave and these guys, we'd break our neck to get to a ball game. I mean, mm -hmm. we'd give up, or I would anyhow. Uh, anything to go play a ball game. Me and Bernie would go up the river before and mushroom hunt before a game and come back and play ball in the, in, in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm surprised Dad wasn't with you. He well, it, mushroom hunt. He was, he was, he was probably for... dragging the field. Right, or something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he was probably dragging the field. He didn't have time for hunting mushrooms. Yeah. 
and he always could set up the, the uh, bases and so many feet from the pitcher's mound to home plate and he I mean he did that's the kind of thing he did and uh, like I said though nobody else better get in his way because he, he knew it and it was always seemed to be right so mm -hmm. he's just a plain out guy that really didn't stand out in the crowd he didn't want to stand out in the crowd. but he, uh, he, he he was uh, that's the kind of guy that yeah. he was. He, yeah. Yeah. He was there to help or do whatever, but he didn't want any accolades. Yeah. yeah. When he worked up at the school and was maintenance on the maintenance with it mm -hmm. all the time, he saved that school a lot of money with oh, the yeah. stuff he, he was he able to figure out how yeah. to do cheaper and save pieces here and there. He didn't throw anything that had potential life left in it. He didn't throw much of that away. And if they had a problem, they always had a spare part here and there. And he saved that school of many a dollar. It's on the road. Say hi, I'm uh, Dave Weber. And I uh, I had the great privilege of uh, officiating high school football with Dave Stiegel. Um, I started in 1982 right out of college when I moved back to St. Genevieve. And uh, Dave was on my very first game. I'll never forget it. It was up at St. Genevieve Public High. It was a probably a JV or freshman game. And... I was nervous and kind of walking around with uh, not knowing what to do. And Dave said, hey, would you quit being so nervous? Nobody's going to know if you screwed up anyway. So that's where it started. Uh, Dave was uh, was always very helpful and a very encouraging uh, person. He was on my first uh, varsity game, too. It's down at Scott City versus Herculaneum, another game I'll never forget. Um, he was always a leader within our officiating group of our, our whole society. Uh, he, he led a lot of um, teaching classes for us, for us young officials. Um, uh, he's a great role model. Um, I wouldn't, would have never ever gotten to the level of officiating if, if it hadn't been for, for Dave and, and, and other officials like Dave. I mean, he was a leader. He was a great role model and he had a, he was a lot of fun. If he didn't, I would have never kept up with officiating if he hadn't hadn't made it so much fun on the on the trips on Friday nights to those varsity games where we were uh, talking football and talking about all the silly stuff. And he was he had so many stories to tell that if, that that brought you into the game of football and got your mind ready for football on these trips that when you stepped onto the field, you were ready to go and you were just excited to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it didn't matter whether you were doing a state championship game, whether you were doing uh, the lowest level seventh and eighth grade football, it was just fun because Dave always made it fun. So I really appreciate what he did for me. And, and once again, I wouldn't, I would have never gotten to the level within the uh, football officiating ranks if it hadn't been for somebody like mm -hmm. Dave. So. He'll always be a part of me, and I, I think of a lot about him when I'm out there on Friday nights. Yeah. Thanks for the time. Yeah. Well, what about Dave, though, um, after he passed away, the year follow after that? It, was, it wasn't as much fun anymore. You know, it, <laughs> it took a while because there was, there was on Friday nights, you, you, at that time, we were still doing just four officials, and it was always me, well, Dave, me, and Paul Viox that went to travel these games and our fourth always came was always somebody from out of the region so when we when we had to pull another guy in it was it just took a while for us to feel as comfortable on the on a friday night you didn't feel as as um as ready to go into battle because you weren't as sure of the that other soldier out there on the field that uh that, that you, you just didn't you didn't know him as well i guess yeah. so um, what about the, um, like his, like after he passed away, you guys had a moment of silence. Yep. Yeah. It was that, uh, I don't remember the game, but, uh, it, it was, it was, it was, yeah, that's, it was hard that day. I was, you know, because I remember, I remember at your dad's funeral, flick samples going up and laying a, a Misha emblem next to the casket and, and I think sports was such a big part of your family and a big part of Dave's life that uh, without without 
that, it just, his, I mean, he left such a legacy and that's such a big part of it. Yeah. So, he was a great guy. Yeah. I miss him a lot. Yeah. So. Thanks. Okay. Well, you had more to say. I have more to say. So, we started talking and uh, not only the first game that I ever did on the varsity level was with Dave, but Dave's last game, and I don't remember what it was, what game it was, but it was a playoff game. And I remember later in that season, Dave was offered a state championship game by the state office. And um, why they waited so long is, is beyond me. But he, he didn't do it because he just knew he couldn't, he wouldn't be 100% out on the field. And if he wasn't going to give 100% out on the field, he wasn't, he wasn't going to take that game. But um, that, that I, always, I always hold that against the state maybe a little bit for waiting so long to yeah. to realize what they had in, in Dave, you know. Yeah. Yes, so. Okay, okay I'm not saying anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm Paul Viox. I was a uh, friend of Dave Stiegel for probably 35 years. And uh, I understand he's going to be inducted to the St. John Sports Hall of Fame. And just like to make a few comments about what a great man he was. Uh, Dave and I umpired baseball together and we refereed football together for probably 25 years. And uh, we had a lot of great road trips. Uh, Dave was a very well respected official and also a very well respected man. And it, it was an honor for me to be able to referee with him all those years. Uh, we, were, we were great friends. Uh, he had some kind kind of a dry sense of humor sometimes, but he always came off with some crazy remarks. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember the last year that Dave was able to officiate, I believe it was 1994, and uh, I had contacted the State Officials Association, and, and uh, they made sure they assigned Dave a state championship football game, I believe it was a 5A game, and about two weeks before the game, uh, Dave says, Paul, he says, I hate to disappoint you. I know you helped me get this assignment and all that. But they said, I'm not going to do it because uh, I'm not going to be 100%. I said, Dave, I said, you can do it. You're, you're fine. He says, no, I'm not going to do it if I can't be 100% out on that field. And that's the way Dave was. He, uh, he always wanted to do everything perfect or, you know, he, that was a fine example there. He declined a and it's a great honor to do a state championship game. So yeah. I know it hurt him not to do it, but that was honest Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I mean, he was, a, he was a fine man, a fine friend, and we have tons of stories we could talk about between the football and the baseball umpiring, but don't have time for, to do that right yeah. now. But he was an excellent official, just like he was a excellent human being. He was sadly missed, and uh, the year after he passed, we dedicated the following season to him. And uh, don't quite remember, we had a moment of silence before every game. I know we did a few of them, and uh, we talked about him driving every game we'd done. Uh, and uh, for a few years after that, even. So I guess that's about all I can say. He was a great man, great gentleman, a great official, and a great friend. Okay. Go ahead. The first day of school, Dave would always say, we're getting out of here. Let's go to Bloomsdale. So we take <laughs> off and go to Bloomsdale. And another time we went to Bloomsdale, they called and said that one of the rooms wasn't heating or something. So we took off and we was going out 61 like a helicopter going on. All of a sudden they said, I got red lights behind me. <laughs> so he explained to the trooper what was going on. And the trooper said, okay, go on. Left the school. And then, um, Another time when we tore the old Taylor house down that where the office is now, in the parking lot for the office is now, uh, they said, well, he said, let's tear the back part down and let the port towards the street and the side over towards, uh, I forget what the guy's name, that old man that lived there in the corner was always sitting there reading his book. You know? Anyway, he said, so he don't see it or he'll be over here trying to stop us. <laughs> and... Uh, I, there's, there's all that one time the dishwasher wasn't working right in the kitchen, and uh, we were working on her, 
And Dave looked at his watch and he said, I got to go. I'm out of here. You can, you can get it done. So I got it done, but I, I didn't know what was what I was doing anyway. Or. And where was he going? He was going to a ref, uh, or, um, a ball game. And, <laughs> and, uh, Good evening to all the people here in St. Genevieve, St. Genevieve R2, Hall of Fame Committee, Board of Education, people that came to the Hall of Fame ceremony. I'd like to say a few words about Mr. Dave Stegel. I knew him starting when I was a youngster, listening to my Uncle Joel Beckley, who played sports with Dave, and my dad, who was superintendent, and was a teacher at St. Genevieve. And then, whenever I uh, was a Legion player, when I was about 15, 16 years old, Dave was our manager. So he was a, like a farmer catcher, which is what I was. So he had many tips he could help me as the season went on. And then later on in life, I always used to see him down at Neil Wiener's station and uh, talk to him. And I, I bought an old house on LaPorte Street, which needed quite a bit of plumbing done. We always had Dave over there to help us whenever something went wrong. My son used to always say, Dad, if you can't fix it, maybe you ought to call Dave Stiegel. And Jerry was just five or six years old. So I just had the most respect for the guy. And uh, he was great for St. Genevieve County, St. Genevieve City, and R2 School District. After he became the maintenance man up there, head of the maintenance in St. Genevieve, that was needed for a long time. He took that over and made an excellent, excellent maintenance director. And then as, as I left the Postal Service and started at UPS, I had a month or two off, so I started working up at St. Jen in the summer, in between. And so Dave said, don't you think we ought to do something about this dirt track we have? And I said, yes. I'd like to help you if I could. So that was just the start of one many things that he did, but we got the track paved. Then he worked on the new bleachers up there, and then he worked on the concession stand. All this he went and, and got from people that he had favors maybe coming from, and it just worked out fantastic. And in uh, closing, I don't want to take up too much time because there's so much to say. He's, in closing, Bernetta Bader and Catherine Ernst's house was being flooded, I think it was 1992. And Dave took it upon himself to try to save that house with his sons and myself, but the water was coming up too fast. But he gave it a gallant effort just like he always did with everything he did. So in closing, I'd like to say to the family, I was glad I was able to be associated with Mr. Dave Steagle. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shelly. One of my fondest memories growing up was Sunday drives. We would go through the thrills, and then we'd go down to the river. We all had to holler at Dad to stop because we swore he would drive us right into the river. Then on the way out, we'd make a wish while we went over to the railroad tracks. We all wished for ice cream, and Dad did too. So we'd go out to Dairy Queen and we'd get our ice cream. Then in 78, our parents bought the Dairy Queen. So Dad's wish did come true. He really did love his ice cream. Dad was taken from us too soon. I wish that each and every grandchild and great-grandchild could have met him. 
but only a few were privileged enough to call him Papa. But I do know his spirit does live in each and every one of them. Hi, I'm DJ. I'm uh, Dave Stiegel's oldest son. Um, just a couple things about Dad that uh, I remember is that uh, he was always a jack of all trades. Uh, he could do everything and anything, and he made it look easy. Uh, looking back at his life, uh, I see that he made that look easy too. He had a full-time job uh, with uh, Klein's Plumbing and Heating. He owned and operated uh, an apartment complex, now called the Southern Hotel, and uh, he raised seven active children. Uh, Mom had a large part in, in that. Uh, I don't know how he had time for all the activities that uh, he was being honored for here, um, but uh, those activities mainly revolved around his involvement in sports as a player, coach, manager, league commissioner, uh, umpire, referee, and groundskeeper, and uh, chief bottle washer. Um, Dad always made time. Uh, how he did it, I don't know, but uh, uh, the main thing is he, he chose to help. And one of the things I'd like to, to pass on here is I've realized that uh, you don't have to be extraordinary uh, to make a difference in people's lives. It starts with choosing to help in whatever way that you can and making time in your busy day to make a difference in someone else's. Thank you. As you can see on the pictures, my dad had a very unique style. He was one that loved to shop. He could not go to St. Louis without passing a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls. He had to go in them. Mom would be like, I'm staying out in the car and reading the paper. So we would go inside and dad would be looking for all those bargains because he was a bargain shopper. He'd find something that he couldn't use, no one in the family can use, but it was so cheap he had to buy it. He knew he would find someone who could use it. Uh, other times we would go down to Cape for the college down there, kids were going to college. He had to go to the hostess outlet and he'd come home with huge bags of hostess treats. Uh, apple pies, banana flips for mom, anything you can think of. So he had a huge sweet tooth. A sweet tooth is an understatement. He had more of all his teeth were sweet because he had the Dairy Queen, he liked his cakes and everything else. So those are come of some of my fond memories of my dad. I'm so proud to be considered a steal. We have a nice, huge clan, and we are a great family because of the leadership that my dad and my mom showed. They both led by examples. They would do anything for anybody else, and I'm very proud to call them my mom and my dad. Thank you. Thank you to the Stiegel family and, and uh, certainly a fitting tribute to Mr. Stiegel. We'll move to our second inductee of the night, Steve Beezer, class of 1985. Steve Beezer grew up in New Offenburg, Missouri, the oldest son of Norman and Betty Beezer. He was an exceptional student and athlete at St. Genevieve High School, where he was in the top 15% of his graduating class, graduating class, and also a member of the National Honor Society. He was a four-year letterman in wrestling and qualified for the state tournament his junior and senior years, being named the outstanding wrestler his senior year. In addition, he was a three-year letterman in baseball, earning first-team all-district honors as a senior. Mr. Beezer was not a highly regarded baseball prospect when he graduated from SGHS in 1985, uh, but he decided to enroll at Jefferson College and join the baseball team as a walk-on. After a promising season at Jefferson College, he earned a baseball scholarship to Mineral Area College. Following another successful season his sophomore year, Steve earned a scholarship to Southeast Missouri State University and continued to play well. 
He graduated from SEMO in 1989 with a bachelor's degree in mathematics and a minor in chemistry. After his college career, the Philadelphia Phillies chose him in the 32nd round of the 1989 Major League June draft. Very few players chosen that low in the draft advanced to the major leagues, but Mr. Beezer defied the odds. Beginning his professional baseball career with the Phillies in low class A, his remarkable determination pro propelled him over the next seven years to the Phillies class AAA team. Following the 1997 baseball season, he signed as a minor league free agent with the New York Mets and made their opening day roster. He made his major league debut and debut on April 1st, 1997. Mr. Beezer appeared in 47 games with the Mets that year, chiefly as a bench player. His left-handed bat, foot speed, and ability to play multiple positions helped him stay on the major league roster for a large portion of the season. He then signed with the Pittsburgh Pirates as a free agent for the 1998 season, appearing in 13 games with that franchise. He finished his major league career with a 250 batting average in 80 major league at bats. He continued playing professionally for two more seasons at the class AAA level before retiring in 2001 as a player with the Memphis Redbirds. Following his playing days in baseball, Mr. Beezer began his career as a teacher and coach at St. John Vianney High School in Kirkwood, Missouri. His baseball team won state championships in 2004 and 2006. He left Vianney in, in 2010 for an assistant baseball coaching position at Southeast Missouri State, uh, where he was named head coach prior to the 2013 season. Coach Beezer coached the, the Southeast Missouri State Redhawks from 2013 to 2016, leading them to three consecutive championships in the Ohio Valley Conference. On June 30th, 2016, he was named head coach of the University of Missouri Tigers. Steve Beezer's high school jersey number one was retired at SDHS, one of only three athletes to earn that honor. In addition, he is a member of the Mineral Area College Hall of Fame and the NJCAA Hall of Fame. Mr. Beezer was also instrumental, instrumental in the formation of the local St. Genevieve River Dogs Youth Baseball Program in 2003. Steve Beezer's journey from being a walk-on baseball player in junior college to the major leagues is a testament to his character, determination, and perseverance to fulfill his dreams. His remarkable career has truly been an inspiration to everyone in the St. Genevieve area. He remains a humble person who has always acknowledged those who helped him achieve his dreams, including high school coach Mike Sherry, professional manager Bobby Valentine, and most importantly, his wife and high school sweetheart, sweetheart Diane Dunlop uh, Beezer, and his faith in God. Steve and Diane were married in 1990 and have been blessed with four children, Cole, Whitley, Carly, and Briley. They currently reside in Columbia, Missouri. Please join me in welcoming Steve Beezer, class of 1985, to the stage. Well, first of all, uh, thank everybody for coming out tonight and, and thank you for uh, being part of this night. It's, it's a very special night, I know, for the Stiegel family and for myself. Uh, you know, I, I'm very humbled uh, about being inducted into the, the Hall of Fame here at St. Genevieve and, and uh, truly want to thank the uh, selection committee. I uh, want to thank the uh, Stiegel family and, uh, and your dad. I think he was, is, was a huge influence uh, as I sit here and listen to this uh, earlier about his influence on me as a baseball player, giving us that platform uh, in St. Genevieve County to, to play Yanks baseball and, and uh, the Babe Ruth, all those things. And, you know, probably the Yanks was, was a really defining moment in, in my baseball career because I learned to deal with pressure uh, when I was with the Yanks. Thinking about, DJ, you'll remember this, and I think Gibby's in here, but all those games that we're sitting there with, with eight players and, and we don't have a pitcher and we're always waiting on, on this one guy and five minutes before the first pitch is ready to be thrown, Mark Vogt shows up. <laughs> and we get to play that day. So without that, there would have never been that opportunity. Uh, Gibby, you remember, right? We're always, yes. So, but you know, 
Tonight it's just it's about uh, earlier the day I, in the day I talked to uh, the student body and, and talked about surrounding yourself by elite uh, people makes you better, gives you that edge uh, to continually push yourself, and and that's where I feel extremely blessed. And uh, you know my family, uh, my parents for for getting me to all those places that I needed to get to, uh, showing me what hard work looks like. I mean, how many people? Uh, at age 12 is driving a trash truck through Lake Forest picking up trash. So, I mean, that's, that's something that I was able to do at age 12, and that gave me a lot of experience there. But uh, my in-laws, Ken and Mary Lou, uh, thank you. I know that uh, the support that you've given us uh, throughout, the, throughout the years. Uh, and then my wife, Diane, uh, who I moved her from city to city constantly trying to chase this dream that, that probably only her and I believe was possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure how, you know, how we were able to stay together this long. I, I, I'm one of those guys that I think I tell my wife something and I give her about half the information and it's usually not great information. You know, I remember the first time, uh, you know, that, that year in 97 of playing in the big leagues and I just tell her, I, I say, hey, uh, she couldn't fly with the team. She was coming in, I think, driving in separately. And, and I just tell her, hey, we're at the Marriott by the, by the airport. Well, being a St. Genevieve guy, I think the airport, there's one airport in New York. Uh, so lo and behold, she's at another airport. She unloaded coal, unloaded uh, Whitley, and, and she's coming into the, the hotel, and that, that wasn't where I was staying at. So that, that was not a good start. Me telling her to, to come to the Marriott by the airport, that wasn't a good start. Uh, dragging her to, to events at, uh, that we had the first year Mets, you know, I'm kind of in the in the blind on a lot of things, and I didn't, I didn't ask questions, but we're going to our dinner, uh, the first dinner, the kickoff dinner, and, and uh, it probably was an event uh, for, for kids, and we brought both of our kids there. Uh, the rest of the players, are, are, they're in tuxes, and you know we're in our St. Genevieve uh, get-up. We, we looked nice, but we didn't quite fit that style, but you know we're looking around and just figuring out, thinking, boy, we really don't belong here right now, and we look up and Cole's got a glass stuck to his face where he's sucking it on his face. Whitley's running around, snot dripping out everything, and we just kind of look at ourselves like, "Hey, we finally made it!" You know, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, but but quite a challenge. But for the commitment that uh, she was able to do, because there's jobs in every town that we had to go to. Uh, you know, you, you you heard the 13 years professionally in the game, but. You know, two of these, those years, we actually made enough money to, to buy food. Uh, the rest of those years in, in minor league baseball, it's very slim. But, you know, it takes that commitment and her support to get us through everything that we, we had to get through to kind of fulfill those dreams of playing in major, major league baseball. The, the people that here, that's here today, I, I think about uh, my development as a player. And uh, I thank everybody in this room, especially the, the older people that were around, uh, as they saw me grow up, uh, that there was no chance that this guy would ever, you know, very, you know, you listen to the, the high school accolades, there, weren't, there wasn't a whole lot there. Uh, as an undersized player, uh, my passion was baseball, my best sport was wrestling. And, and actually I played two years of basketball and I only played, I only did two years of wrestling. I, my passion, I had more passion for basketball than I did wrestling, but it allowed me to eke, level that playing field uh, with being able to compete against guys my size. But, you know, I think uh, just sticking with it, the stick to itness that, that I call it, uh, it, it really paid off. And eventually I, I believed that I was going to get bigger. I was, I was praying every day that I was going to get bigger and eventually things would happen in baseball and was very blessed that they, they eventually happened and, and people that stuck with me. But thinking back on the coaches and teachers that I had at St. Jen, uh, it's definitely a community that cares. I mean, my wife and I will call St. Jen home forever, no matter where we end up in the next several years. Uh, but St. Jen's always home, and the people is what makes makes this home and what makes this town special. And just uh, you know, feel really blessed to be part of this community. But remembering the uh, the days of baseball, back with uh, Coach Sherry, the toughness and discipline that he instilled in the players uh, in our program. Uh, it, it was second to none, and I, I still I still use some of the tactics uh, that Coach Sherry used on us, and it was it was about disciplining players, and 
you know, I kept telling him, Coach, I'm a catcher, I'm a catcher, I'm a catcher. Well, Mike Stiegel's catching my freshman year, and then we've got other guys that are bigger, stronger, that are better catchers than me. And finally, I get to catch my senior year. But, you know, he's making me go take ground balls at second base or third base, and every ground ball that goes through your legs, you got to take a trip to the fence. And, and I was trying to learn a new position whenever my – all I did was catch all my life. But – Learning those lessons and then learning, you know, getting that toughness part is what I think really helped me get through uh, those tough years because it would have been easy to quit, uh, give up. Like, like the bio said, very few 30-second rounders ever get to that level uh, of major league level. Very, very few get out of two years of professional baseball. But it, it, it's about the support and the people that you surround yourself with. It's about the family. Uh, it, I mean, there was a point where it, it was tough, but knowing that my family was always there for me and knowing that, that people in this community were kind of fighting and, 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 and hoping for me uh, that, that it never allowed me to give up. And I think that's one of the reasons I was able to stick with it is because of the family atmosphere, because, because of this community. And that was very special uh, for me as a person and as a player, knowing the support that I, I continually had. Um, you know, we talked to, we, earlier, I told the guys about the only way I was going to get to catch my senior year was that, I, that if I weighed 130 pounds. And uh, the coach never broke out the scale because he knew I didn't weigh 130 pounds. But uh, I don't think he had anybody else that could catch that year. So I, I kind of rolled into the role that I, that I really uh, loved and was passionate about was catching because I wrestled 119 that year. That was a year I didn't hardly cut any weight because I was trying to meet his quota of getting to 130 pounds. And it just didn't work. But I'm glad he didn't break the scale out because I knew that I was slightly under 130 pounds as a senior. Uh, so I, anyway, I got to catch. And, and the guys, I see, see a lot of my buddies here and guys that I played ball with uh, that came to support. And, and thank you to you and your families for giving up the night uh, to support us. But, you know, we had a great group of guys. We, had, we, were, we, were, we loved uh, our time here at St. Jen. And, and we really competed well as a team. I think uh, all of us to this day will say that we kind of choked and underachieved in the game when we had Festus on the ropes and we were, we were pounding a, another major league pitcher that pitched about five years in, in major league baseball. But we were, we were going neck to neck with them and, and pounding uh, baseballs off the wall off of him and, and we just came up a little short. But that was a pretty special team by the end of the year. We didn't start off that way. Uh, you know, we had Big Daddy there. Coach Sherry taught him this technique of, of playing third base. And it was, don't use your glove, just stick your chest in front of every ball, knock it down, and throw the guy out. And he was the best in the league. I can't believe he didn't win a gold glove that year with, with his chest, the way he played that. Uh, so, you know, it was just, a, it was a great group of guys. And, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it was a band of brothers. And we had a ton of fun uh, in our time here and, and really uh, enjoyed our, our time. Um, you know, just to kind of wrap this up, it's the, uh, you know, Saint, like I said, St. Jen is a place uh, that, that we love as a family. Uh, this is our family, and, we, and uh, I, can't, I can't express my gratitude enough uh, for having the opportunity to be part of the, of the St. Genevieve Hall of Fame. And I thank my family, my, my friends, everybody that showed up tonight for the support. Uh, I truly thank you and wish you the best. Thank you. This district and St. Genevieve High School has, uh, have a long history of tradition and success. And on behalf of the Board of Education, administration, faculty, staff, and students, I'm pleased to welcome both of our inductees into the St. Genevieve High School Hall of Fame. And I'd like to thank all of you for coming tonight. Have a safe trip. Thank you. <laughs>